hello guys and welcome back to my channel civil construction and tutor and in this video i'll show you how to design a footing subjected to an axial load and by axial moment so design a rectangular footing for an column 600 mm by 400 mm subjected to an axial load of 600 kN and moment about x and y as 100 kN meter and 60 kN meter respectively consider this as the unfactored load as the service load the soil bearing capacity is 200 kN per meter square. Consider M25 grade concrete and Fe500 steel. So these are the given condition. Uh, now let us start with the solution. Given service load 600 kN meter, sorry 600 kN. Similarly, service moment that is the unfactored moment is 100 kN meter about x axis and moment about y axis is 60 kN meter. Soil bearing capacity is given as 200 kN meter square. Uh, characteristic strength of concrete is 25 newton mm square similarly yield strength of steel is given as 500 kilo newton 500 newton per mm square the size of the column is 600 mm by 400 mm so considering the longer part as the width of the column and shorter part as the depth of the column bc and dc respectively so now the very first step is to calculate the area required for the footing so considering 10% uh, of service load as a self weight of footing we have to calculate the area required so area required is equal to 1.1 times of pu by sbc so this is soil bearing capacity considering 10 percent so 1.1 times of 600 this is the unfactored load divided by 200 which is the soil bearing capacity so this comes as 3.30 meter square so this is the area required and for now we have a rectangular footing so it is uh, economical to provide a rectangular footing so providing a rectangular footing with equal projection but that is the difference we will provide equal projection on either side of the footing so that it becomes much more economical as well as easier to design so if we provide equal projection on both side then the design is uh, somehow similar to that of the square footing so for considering equal projection of the footing on either side we have this condition so that is L f minus bc divided by 2 lf is the length of footing bc is the width of the column that is the longer side of the column bf is the width of footing and dc is the depth of the column divided by 2 divided by 2 so basically lf minus bc divided by 2 is equal to nothing but the projection similarly bf minus dc divided by 2 is nothing the projection so the projection on either side should be equal so for that lf is equal to bf plus 0.2 so this 0.2 is from bc minus dc that is 0.6 minus 0.4 converting this into meter okay let us convert this in terms of bf as well so bf is equal to lf minus 0.2 so now we have area uh, for rectangle as lf into bf then area required was 3.30 is equal to lf into bf now substituting the value of bf as lf minus 0.2 we'll get a polynomial equation of degree 2 so on solving that we'll get lf as 1.92 meter similarly required bf will be 1.72 meter and this uh, dimension as we know should satisfy the bearing condition so i'll t talk about that later on so for now we'll provide lf as 2.6 meter and bf as 2.4 meter ensuring that the condition of equal projection which is lf minus 0.2 is ensured here as well so i have provided a value greater than that of the required one and why i provided uh, this value i'll talk about that later on while discussing about near soil pressure So LF is 2.5 meter, 2.6 meter. Similarly, this is 2.4 meter. So here we know that the footing is resting on soil. So the soil will exert pressure on the base of the footing, and that is the net soil pressure on footing. So we have to compute net soil pressure on both the direction, that is x and y. And for this, sigma max minimum is equal to, that is the soil pressure is equal to PD by A plus minus mu by z so where pd is the design load a is the area provided mu is the moment about axis and z is the section modulus and firstly we will compute along longer side so the soil pressure for a footing subjected to biaxial moment as well as axial load is of trapezoidal type that is non-uniform as due to the eccentricity the pressure at one end and the other end will vary from each other so 
this is along longer side the pressure distribution similarly along shorter side we have pressure distribution in this form i hope you can understand and the value will be sigma minimum and sigma max respective of the magnitude so let's calculate the value so along longer side sigma max is equal to plus value and pd is a design load so 1.5 times into load that is the axial load as well as the self weight of footing because it will be exerted on the pre, uh, on the soil so pd is equal to 1.5 into 1.1 into 600 divided by area provided which is 2.6 times of 2.4 plus 1.5 into 100 because moment about x axis is 100 divided by we are considering the longer side so bd square that means b into lf square by 6 b b f being 2.4 2.6 square by 6 so this value comes as 214.127 kilo newton meter square and remember this is the factored value and this value should be less than 1.5 times of swell bearing capacity and for now 1.5 times of swell bearing capacity is 300 kilo newton per meter square and this is why i provided dimension greater than that of the required one we would have provided 2 and 1.8 considering a round of value but that will not be sufficient considering the safe bearing capacity so we have to provide much more greater area to ensure that this value is less than 1.5 times of swell bearing capacity don't get confused this is a factored value so we have to compare with the factored swell bearing capacity similarly sigma minimum will be nothing but a minus value for the moment as uh, this will be a reversible type that is from the either direction so if it was not a reversible case that is if the moment is not reversible then we will consider uh, we can consider the moment in one direction only for now this is 103.2 kilo newton per meter square i hope you can understand just substituting the value and we will put a minus value instead of the plus value and this is the minimum bearing pressure and this should be greater than zero to ensure safety against bearing for footing so this is greater than zero it is okay similarly along y axis sigma max the first term that is pd by a will be same for both axis the only difference will be the moment and 1.5 times of 60 as moment about y axis is 60 divided by now we have to ensure that we are considering the shorter side that is bf so bf square so lf into bf square by 6 this value comes as 195 kilo newton per meter square and the maximum swell bearing capacity is less than 1.5 times of swell bearing capacity so it is okay similarly sigma minimum uh, considering a minus value we get 123 kilo newton per meter square which is greater than zero so it is also okay don't get confused this is a factored swell pressure so finally we can get a conclusion that is the footing is safe for bearing pressure ensuring we have provided sufficient area sigma max is 214 along longer direction sigma minimum is 200 uh, 103 kilo newton per meter square similarly along shorter side we have sigma max as 195 kilo newton per meter square similarly sigma minimum along shorter direction is 123 kilo newton per meter square so this is a trapezoidal type so you can understand the next step is check for bending that is bend maximum bending moment on the footing due to the soil pressure the critical section for bending is at the face of column so we'll check for both axis and along longer direction the critical face or the critical is this section that is at the face of the column so this is the critical section So this portion is a critical section for now we can consider this as a cantilever beam i hope you can get my point so this much portion can be computed or can be considered as a cantilever beam subjected to an udl of this magnitude so this trapezoid is the non-uniform load acting on the surface on the base of the footing so along longer face the length of the overhang section l 
which is lf minus bc divided by 2 i have already discussed about this in the first part so 1000 mm lf being 2.6 and bc being 0.6 this comes as 1000 mm which is 1 meter similarly resisting width this is a rectangular footing with uniform depth so the resisting width available for resisting the moment is the entire width of the footing if it was a sloped footing then the uh, resisting width will be different that is you can check my video regarding slope footing so resisting width is 2400 mm as the width of the footing provided is 2400 mm then bending moment if it was a case of udl that is a cantilever beam as we have already said we'll assume this overhang portion as a cantilever beam if it was a udl then the bending moment would have been calculated as udl into l into l by 2 so sigma face into b this is converting the swell pressure into udl but for now we are uh, or we have a case in which the footing portion that is the overhang portion is subjected to a U, uvl that is uniformly varying load so for that we have to consider a different case that is bending moment or moment is simply the simple definition of moment is force into perpendicular distance so we'll use this concept to find the moment at the face of column and for that as we have a trapezoidal loading so this is the loading case if we see this is the trapezoid now i can convert or i can divide this into two a simple section that is one is the rectangle and the other is triangle i hope you are getting my point and at the face of the column so we have to find bending moment or we have to find bending moment at the face of the column so we will compute the pressure at the face of the column so we have to compute this value so we are interested with the value of the swell pressure at this section so we will use the similar triangle rule so i have just uh, i'm taking this figure only that is the swell pressure so i hope you can get so for sigma face using similar triangle property now let us divide this into two triangles so firstly this triangle and similarly another triangle will be at the that is the considering the face of the column so now here we will use the similar triangle property so this value is sigma max minus sigma minimum divided by lf so the triangle one is done is equal to this value is sigma face dash divided by l plus bc why l plus bc so here you can see so l is the overhang bc being the width of the column so l plus bc and we'll get this value sigma face dash but we are interested with this value later on we can add this value by sigma minimum to get the overall magnitude so sigma face dash is equal to 214.6 sigma max is 214.127 minus sigma minimum along longer direction don't get confused this is 103.2 divided by lf which is 2.6 into l being 1 plus bc is 0.6 so this comes as 68.26 kN meter square so this value is 68.26 kN per meter square now let us add this value that is the triangle uh, rectangular portion so sigma face finally is equal to sigma face dash plus sigma minimum and we'll get 171.46 kN per meter square so the swell pressure at the face of the column is 100 71.46 so this is a factored swell pressure don't get confused i'm saying repeatedly and, and bending moment now we have to find the bending moment we have computed this value now you can see this is a trapezoid we are interested with this value that is the length of the overhang section so this is this much swell pressure is acting on the overhang portion so we are interested with this much section only and i have just said the moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance so now what i will do is i will convert this into 
two sections one rectangle and another is a triangle and i'll compute the bending moment with respect to this force now firstly f1 that is for rectangle we have to compute this value that is the area of this rectangle in which is sigma face so the value of this much section is sigma face times l y l the length of the overhang as this load is distributed or is acting on the overhang portion into bf why the swell pressure is distributed along the width of the footing so b now we get this value as 411.504 kN substituting sigma phase as 171 l as 1 and bf as 2.4 so this comes as 411 similarly f2 which is for a triangle and for a triangle the area is 1 by 2 times of height which is sigma max so the whole value is sigma max and the value of this rectangle then we will get this much so sigma max minus sigma face into l as it is uh, along the length of the projection into bf considering it is distributed along the or uh, uh, throughout the width of the footing so bf and this comes as 51.168 kilonewton and finally bending moment is nothing but moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance and for this rectangle the resultant lies at the centroid which is l by 2 so f1 into l by 2 plus for the triangle considering the apex we have this is resultant at 2L by 3. If it was from the base, it would have been L by 3. But for now, we are considering from the apex. So, F2 into 2L by 3. These are the perpendicular distance. So, we get bending moment as 239.862 kN meter. Substitute F1 as 411, F2 as 51, L by 2 as 1 by 2. And similarly, 2 into 1 by 3. L is 1. So, we will get bending moment as 239.862 kN meter. So, this is the bending moment along the longer side. Now, we will calculate the depth considering the moment okay, along the longer edge. That is just the value we have just calculated. So, FE 500 for FE 500 from SP 16 table C. So, you can check this code. We will get the Value for MU by FCK BD square that is the limiting moment resistance index as 0 0.133 that is for FE 500. If it were if it was FE 415, it would have been 0 0.138. Then cross multiply, we have just computed the value of bending moment as 239.862, converting this into Newton mm 0 0.133 into FCK is 25 into B. The resisting width is 2400. Don't get confused, B is the resisting width into d required square so we are finding the depth required according to the bending moment and this comes as 173 mm so the depth required for uh, safety against this bending is 173 mm this is the effective depth similarly bending moment about shorter edge that is the bending moment along uh, shorter edge that we have just computed which was for longer phase okay so for shorter uh, is it is nothing but the length of the overhang portion along shorter edge is B, which is equal to 1000 mm as we are considering a equal projection. So, it will be 1000 mm. Similarly, resisting width for this time, it will be the length of the footing, which is 2600 mm. And now, sigma phase can be computed with the same formula that I have just done for the longer phase uh, using this similar triangle rule. So, I hope you can understand this thing. We get... 165 kilonewton per meter square this is along the shorter edge don't get confused okay similarly okay this is bf similarly this will be b and this will be d for the shorter edge and substitute the value we will get this and bending moment is again so if this is the swell pressure at the face of the column we will convert this into two sections again one and two and we can compute the value of F1 and F2 as I did for the uh, shorter edge. I hope you can understand just I have substituted the value now directly for F1 and F2 and B by 
2 and by 3 which is 1 and 1 respectively so we get bending moment as 240.5 kN meter so the bending moment is greater along this shorter edge so we computed 239 and 240 which is almost equal we can see because we have provided equal projection so that make our design easier by considering our equal projection now calculating depth considering bending moment so using the same formula from sp16 table c and substituting the value of moment as 240.5 into 10 to the power 6 and ensuring that the resisting width for this case is the length of the footing 2600 which was 2400 previously for the longer side so depth required will be 166.7 which is less because the resisting width is greater and the depth required was greater for the longer edge in, in comparison to the shorter edge so we'll take the maximum of these two so providing the effective depth greater of the two values considering moment but for safety against shear failure the selected depth or the value obtained from bending moment is not sufficient so it should be taken two to three times greater or the depth computed from the bending moment should be multiplied by two to three times to ensure safety against shear failure hence so the value we had the maximum value was 173 mm along longer edge so if we multiply by two or three times we will get this as roughly as 340-350 and considering the overall depth which is d basically overall depth is equal to d plus effective cover so I'm just taking this value as a round of value. So this is 450 mm overall depth. Don't get confused with small d. This is overall depth. Well, this is the effective depth. So I'm taking overall depth as 450 mm. And assuming phi is equal to 12 mm, that is, I'll provide 12 mm bar for the footing, which may not be uh, correct every time because I may need a greater value of bar later on while I will calculate the area of steel. But for now, I'm assuming that phi is equal to 12 mm will be sufficient for both direction. Then effective depth along two axes, that is along the longer edge and along the shorter edge will be different. And for the first case, that is along the short longer edge, D is equal to D1 and D2. Okay, so this is along the longer edge and this is along the shorter edge. So I'll make you clear about this. So it is nothing but overall depth minus clear cover minus phi by 2. Why? Because the bar along this longer is, is this horizontal bar. Okay. So this is the bar that we will be providing for the longer edge. And the effective depth considering this bar is nothing but D minus clear cover minus half of this bar. So 450 minus clear cover minus 5 by 2 considering clear cover as 50 mm we will get this value as d1 as 394 mm similarly d2 now if we consider the shorter is the bar we have provided along the shorter is or we can say parallel to shorter is is this so the effective depth will be clear cover minus sorry overall depth minus clear cover minus the bar along longer edge minus half of the bar for shorter edge so 450 minus clear cover minus 5 minus 5 by 2 so this comes as 382 mm so this is d1 and d2 that is depth along longer face depth along shorter edge now calculation of reinforcement so we will calculate the reinforcement according to the bending moment we have just computed and along x axis that is parallel to shorter side and along y axis we have to compute so firstly i will calculate along y axis that is the reinforcement provided parallel to longer edge so i hope you are getting my point we are calculating along the y axis that is perpendicular parallel to longer face from is 456 2000 nx uh, g percentage of area still is nothing but 50 into fck by fy so we are just arranging the formula obtained from annex g so area of steel is equal to 50 into fck by fy into 1 minus under root 1 minus 4.6 mu by fck bd square 
Now substitute the value 50 into 25 by 500 minus 1 1 minus under root 1 minus 4.6 into moment about or moment along longer is we compute at 239.9 so converting this into newton mm divided by 25 into resisting width for longer is is the width of the footing which is 2400 into and the depth along longer is is 394 so substitute the value and we'll get 0.153 percent and according to is code the minimum percentage of steel should be 0.12 percent so it is okay that is the value greater than 0.12 percent so it is okay that is the area can be provided considering this percentage of steel so area of steel provided is nothing but 0.153 divided by 100 that is percentage into b into d so b is 2400 that is the reinforcement will be distributed along the width of the footing so we'll take b into 394 which is the effective depth so this comes as 1446 mm square so this much of area is still is required according to the bending moment we have computed and considering phi as 12 mm the spacing required is equal to width of section divided by area of steel divided by area of rebar so this is how the spacing is computed so this is length of footing as i have said we will provide this parallel to longer edge so this is how the bar will be placed and as it is placed along the width so the width of the section here will be the width of the footing so which is 2400 divided by area of steel divided by area of rebar so 1446 is the rebar required divided by area of rebar as we are providing 12 mm so pi by 4 into 12 square so this comes as 187.55 mm but this value is greater than 180 mm according to is 456 2000 the value should not be greater than 180 mm to ensure safety against cracking so the value should be less than 180 mm so considering the uh, workability inside we will be providing spacing as 150 mm and the number of rebars required is equal to width of section divided by spacing plus 1 so this is how the number of bars is calculated uh, the width of section is 2400 divided by spacing provided is 150 plus 1 this is done to counteract the number of requires bar so this is 17 numbers area of steel provided is nothing but 17 times of the area of rebar provided we are calculating this again because the spacing has been reduced so this is 1921 mm square which is okay so provide 17 numbers of 5 to 12 mm bar at 150 mm center to center parallel to the longer edge so if we see in the reinforcement drawing so along the longer side parallel to longer side we are providing 5 to 12 mm at 150 mm center to center and it will be the bottom bar if we see in the section so this is along x axis from is 456 2000 nxz we have the same formula i'm not going to repeat this again so percentage of area is still we have to put the value that we have computed for mu along shorter is which was 240 and for B, it will be 2600 considering the uh, LF as the resisting width and depth, effective depth is 382 mm. So this comes as 0.153 percentage, which is greater than 0.12 percent. Okay. So here you can see that the percentage of steel required is almost equal for both directions due to the equal projection. Although it is a rectangular uh, footing, will provide the reinforcement in the similar fashion that is uniformly in both direction as per code uh, is 456 2000 uh, clause 34.3.c the distribution of the reinforcement has to be done for the shorter edge that is for reinforcement in the shorter direction a central band equal to the width of the footing shall be marked and along the length of the footing and the portion of the reinforcement determined in accordance with the equation uh, given in the code has to be uniformly distributed along the central band and for the outer band the distribution will be less in comparison to the central band but for our case the central band will not be uh, provided as it has a almost equal projection so the distribution will be done uniformly along both direction that is x and y so i'll provide 
12 number of bar at 150 mm center to center parallel to shorter side so the number of reverse required 2600 by 150 plus 1 so 18 numbers provide 18 numbers of 12 mm at 150 mm center to center parallel to shorter edge so here you can see we have provided 12 mm bar at 150 mm center to center parallel to shorter edge and this will be the circle provided here so these are the bars provided parallel to shorter edge so 12 mm at 150 mm center to center so this is the reinforcement detailing now let us go to the next step so the next step is to check for one way shear and the critical distance is at distance d for one way shear and this has to be computed along both direction so along longer direction and similarly we have to calculate the swell pressure at the distance d from the face of the column as we did for the bending moment that is we calculated the swell pressure at the face of the column but for now we will compute the swell pressure at a distance d from the face of the column we will use the similar triangle property again so swell pressure at distance d so if it is the face of the column then we have to compute at a distance d so this is the point where we have to find the swell pressure and as i have already done how to find the swell pressure at a particular distance so i won't be repeating again so the distance will be l b c plus d previously it was just l plus b c but for now it is l plus b c plus d considering one way shear is to be done at a distance d so swell pressure at d is nothing but sigma max minus sigma minimum by lf into L plus BC plus D plus Sigma minimum okay so we will get the value as 188.12 so this is a similar triangle plus Sigma minimum considering this rectangle portion so we will get 188.12 kilo Newton per meter square that is the swell pressure at a distance D from the face of the column now shear force we have to compute Vmax which is for a UD, uh, for a cantilever beam subjected to UDL, as of for now, we'll take the average of these two value, and that value can be considered as a UDL by multiplying it along the width. So sigma d average, that is average of sigma d plus sigma max into BF distributing along the width of the footing into l minus d because we are interested to find shear at a distance d for a udl of span l so for uh, udl for a cantilever beam subject to udl the shear force is computed by using this concept so sigma d average 188.12 plus sigma max which is 214 divided by 2 into 2.4 which is the width into 1 minus 0 0.394 because the depth along longer edge is effective depth is 0 0.394 so this comes as 292.4 kilo newton then maximum shear stress according to is code we have tau max is equal to v max by resisting area so as i said the critical section is at a distance d and the resisting area is this portion this much portion is responsible for resisting the shear hence resisting area is 2400 at the width the resisting width which is bf into the okay the value d because the critical section is at distance d so bf into d this comes as 0 0.309 newton per mm square the simple concept here is if we see this is the base of the footing and this is the column now the sh shear or the crack occurs diagonally at an angle 45 degree and the value here is d and so this will be for uh, d as well and using the concept of trigonometry we have 10 beta as p by b 
as I said it is 45 degree so 10 45 degree is equal to perpendicular so this is perpendicular which is D and B 10 45 degree is 1 so B is equal to D that is this distance will be D so it is critical at a distance D I hope you get my point why it is checked for a distance D the due to the shear crack at an 45 degree will check at a distance D so this comes at 0 0.309 Newton per mm square and for m25 concrete and percentage of steel as so the area of steel provided was 1921 parallel to longer edge so 1921 divided by 2400 into 394 this is B this is depth into 100% so this comes at 0.19% and we have to compute the um, permissible shear stress for M25 concrete considering percentage of steel as 0.19 so this is from IS code I have already discussed about this in my previous video I hope you can understand so for this much of percentage of steel and M25 concrete permissible shear stress is 0.32 Newton per mm square and the maximum shear stress is 0.309 so tau c is greater than tau max it is safe against one way shear and similarly for shorter direction it will be safe as the depth is sufficient why am I not going to okay you have to understand one thing maximum shear stress is vmax and vmax is calculated from the swell pressure and the swell pressure along shorter edge is smaller as compared to that of the longer edge so here you can see 103 214 similarly 195 and 123 so obviously the swell pressure at a distance d will be less as compared to the longer direction and hence the shear stress will be smaller compared to that of the longer direction and the percentage of steel is almost equal and the shear stress permissible shear stress will be this and hence it will be safe against one way shear along longer shorter direction but i have computed the value so that uh, you will be able to understand why i am skipping that step so along shorter direction swell pressure is 176 0.32 kN meter square at a distance D which is 384 mm for the shorter direction resisting width will be 2600 mm and shear force taking average into resisting width 2.6 for the shorter direction into 1 minus 0.384 so this comes as 298.1 kN and maximum shear stress will be 0.3 N per mm square and for P percentage of 0.2 percent and m25 concrete permissible shear stress is 0.33 newton per mm square which is okay but in exam you have to show this step as well so i just uh, showed this value so it will be easy to check with your calculation so the depth provided is safe against one way shear as well so the next step is to check for two way shear and the critical distance is a distance d by 2 from the face of the column and for two way shear we have to take the average of d1 and d2 which is 388 mm and d1 being as 394 and d2 being as 382 mm and uh, perimeter of resisting section so let us see in figure first so the critical section lies at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column in both direction so that means the critical section remember two-way shear is checked for a critical area rather than critical length which we did for bending moment and one-way shear so this is the critical area or we can say the area responsible for resisting the two-way shear So this green section is the critical area or we can say resisting section. So we will have to find the perimeter of this critical section and perimeter of critical section is equal to as it is a rectangle so 2 times of L plus B and for L it is D by 2 as we are checking for at a distance D by 2 plus 
width of column which is BC plus D by 2. Similarly, along this direction it will be D by 2 plus DC plus D by 2. So, 2 into L plus B, substitute the value, we will get perimeter as 3.6 meter. This is in mm, we have to provide this into meter, just convert that, okay. So, which is, uh, okay, 0 0.6, 0 0.388, 0 0.388 divided by 2 divided by 2, and this is 0 0.4. Similarly, area of resisting section. So, at a distance d by 2, so this much section is responsible for resisting two way shear. Hence, perimeter into depth. So this is the perimeter into the depth. Okay. As we know, the perimeter, uh, the punching shear or two way shear is nothing but the column penetrating into the footing. So this much depth is required to resist two way shear. So perimeter. 3600 mm into 388 mm so this comes as 1418400 mm square now we have to calculate the area of on hash section which is the tributary area or we can say the remaining portion okay, let me color it with different colors so we can say this as on hash area in terms of this plan so the swell pressure at the unhashed area multiply by swell pressure okay the area of unhashed section as this is the tributary area tributary area means or the loading at the area responsible for the failure so for computing the area of unhashed section it is area of footing minus area of hash section so LF into BF is, it is the area of footing minus BC plus D by 2 plus D by 2. So that is the length of the critical section and this is the width of the critical section. So L into B and finally we get the area of on hash section that is a tributary area. So shear force is equal to Vmax is equal to two way shear is also known as punching shear. So sigma average for determining the two way shear will take the average of the maximum and minimum value or soil pressure at the center line sigma average into area of tributary section and don't get confused two way shear is checked along longer age only we will not check for the shorter age okay as we are taking already average value of depth so we'll take along longer age only sigma average into area of tributary section why area of tributary section so uh, let us understand this thing the column will penetrate into this region and this is the critical section and the shear force will go in this direction and as this is coming down the shear force will be caused due to the swell pressure of the unhashed section so this is why this unhashed area is known as the tributary area uh, 103 plus 214 by t divided by 2 this is sigma minimum and sigma max along longer is into 5.5 this is 866 kilonewton. Maximum shear stress is equal to V max by resisting section area as we have already done for one way shear as well. V max is 866 converting this into newton, uh, kilonewton to newton so into 10 to power 3 resisting section area. So this is 1418400. This comes as 0 0.262 newton per mm square. And Permissible shear stress as per IS 456-2000 Tau V which is the permissible shear stress is equal to Ks into Tau C where Ks is equal to 0 0.5 plus beta and this value of Ks cannot be greater than 1 and beta being the ratio of shorter side to longer side of the column 400 by 600 so this comes as 0 0.667 and it will be 1.16 which is greater than 1 so the value of ks will be taken as 1 and tau c is nothing but 0 0.25 under root fck considering limit state method so 1 0 0.25 under root 25 this comes as 1.25 newton per mm square since tau v is 
ks into tau c so 1 into 1.25 this value will be 1.25 and the maximum shear stress was 0.62 tau max so the permissible shear stress is greater than uh, the maximum shear stress hence it is too uh, it is safe against two way shear that is no shear reinforcement has to be provided okay if it was to be provided with the shear reinforcement it would be an expensive method so we have to ensure that the depth is adequate to uh, satisfy the maximum shear stress with the permissible shear stress of the concrete now the last step is to check for the development length that is the ld for column bars so uh, assuming that the question has not given us but assuming maximum size of bar from column is 16 mm then uh, from is 456 the value of development length can be computed as ld is equal to phi sigma s by 4 into tau bd you can find this from the code and considering the maximum size of bar from column as 16 mm 16 into 0 0.87 into 500 divided by 4 into 1.4 because tau bd this is the bone stress and for m25 grade of concrete it is taken as 1.4 and 60 percent that is multiplied by 1.6 considering that the deformed bar that is the bone strength bone distress can be increased by 60 percent for deformed bar so 1.6 and we'll get the value of development length as 776.78 mm and the available length which is the projection will consider the shorter side that is but for our condition both projection are equal so b is nothing but 1000 mm and the available required development length is 776 so it is sufficient that is available length is sufficient for development length of column bars hence the column bars are extended into the footing up to ld and rests on footing reinforcement so here you can see this is the column bar coming into the footing 8 number of 16 mm bar this is just assumption the question has not given us so this being the b or l we can say so the development length will uh, is smaller than that of the available length so it is okay and it will rest on the footing rebar so in this way a biaxial loaded or biaxial moment of footing subjected to a biaxial moment is designed i hope it helped you if it did do like and subscribe and comment if you had any confusion, thank you.